بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد الله سبحانه وتعالى sent us into this world for a temporary period based on a person's impressions does he get affected by the mahal environment and does his attention go to that side Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us solutions where the person is worried about their health, what about calamities, security. More importantly, the traps and the plotting of Iblis and Shaitan where a person can lose his Iman, khasirat dunya wal akhirah. So we can imagine there is so much light, nur, guidance in Quran and Hadith that if a person passes their life and they not having access to this, what a loss in the world when a person becomes bankrupt and they declare bankruptcy, we say that's a great loss. No, that is small compared to being bankrupt in the Akhirat. We need to spend time with the Ulama, we need to learn Deen. Deen has all our needs and solutions. So we need to make a lot of dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides us to the truth, otherwise this world is filled with deceptions. Even Sometimes the experts get caught in this deception. There was a story of an unemployed engineer who decides to open up a medical clinic. So the engineer was unemployed for a long time, decided this is the way to go and he puts a sign outside the clinic, a cure for your ailment guaranteed at $500, we'll pay you $1,000 if we fail. So a doctor didn't like it, that here's an engineer, he's open up, uh, he's, he's, he's capitalizing on the trade and the industry. So this is a good opportunity now, let me make some money, I can make a thousand dollars. So he goes to the clinic. So the doctor says, I have lost my sense of taste. So the doctor ideally would have looked for symptoms which he knew the clinic will not find any solution. They will be helpless because he's an expert, that's his field. So he will find a solution. So the engineer said, nurse, please bring medicine from box 22 put three drops in the patient's mouth so as the droplets were put in the doctor said this is gasoline so the engineer said congratulations you've got your taste back that'll be five hundred dollars so the doctor gets annoyed now he's very upset he goes back after a couple of days later and he thinks of another solution how he can trap the engineer and he can recover his money so he said doctor I've lost my memory, I cannot remember anything. So the engineer says, nurse, please bring medicine from box 22, put three drops in the patient's mouth, the doctor, but that is gasoline. So the engineer says, congratulations, you've got your memory back. Congratulations, you've got your memory back, that'll be $500. The doctor leaves angrily again, upset, and comes back again after several days but this time he's determined that I'm going to get my money back so he thought of a solution how he can trick the engineer so the doctor says my eyesight has become weak so the engineer replies well doctor uh, sorry he says well I don't have any medicine for this take this thousand dollars and he passes the doctor a five hundred dollar note take this thousand dollars but he passes him a five hundred dollar note so the doctor says but this is five hundred dollars so the engineer says congratulations you got your vision back that will be another five hundred dollars so dunya is like that it's full of doka full of deception everybody's there to extort everyone else Allah and his Rasul and Deen is there to give us, not to extort us or deprive us. And a person who does not give for Allah and His Rasul, he cannot take from Allah and His Rasul. So these A'mal are the A'mal of Nubuwa. Let us try and learn. Learn Deen, understand Deen, practice Deen and propagate Deen. Rewrite of Anas radiallahu an. من قال إذا خرج من بيته when you leave your home and you read this dua بسم الله توكلت على الله ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله a person who says this the voice from the unseen the farishta say هديت وكفيت ووقيت وتنحى عنه الشيطان that you will be guided you will be sufficed you will be protected 
and shaitan disappears, runs away, flees from this person. So all those needs that we have when leaving the home, a simple dua will suffice for our needs. So we need to have yaqeen in the amal of nubuwa. Likewise, to say every day, whether it's often, whether we fix a time morning and evening, three times, five times, seven times, Hazbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. That should be on our tongues often. Why? One, it was the sunnah of Anbiya alayhi salatu wassalam. Likewise, from any time of difficulty, hardship, like Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam, when he was thrown in the fire, he repeated the same words. Hazbunallah, hazbi Allah, wa ni'mal wakil. Likewise, Nabi alayhi salatu wassalam used the same words, the battle of Uhud, when there was a situation and these same words were utilized, some Quranic ayat were revealed, Inna nasa qad jama'u lakum fakhshawhum fazadahum imana wa qalu hazbunallahu wa ni'mal wakil. Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakil. So these are the words that we should keep our tongues busy with. Amongst the benefits, ulama have explained daf'u su wal adha. By repeating this, any evil, any harms, any afflictions, that will not come to a person. Secondly, tasbu rida rahman. That a person will achieve the pleasure and the happiness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three, بَثُ الرَّعْبِ وَالْخَوْفِ فِي نُفُوسِ الظَّالِمِينَ وَالْعَادَى That a person who reads this dua will cause fear and anxiety and awe in the hearts of the oppressors and the enemies. So if you fear enemies, read this dua. كِفَايَةُ الْهُمُومِ وَالْغُمُومِ Number four, it will suffice for all worries, stress, anxiety that a person has. Number five, Hifdullah wa Riayah, the protection of Allah and the special tawajju and attention of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this person. Number six, Taysirul Umur wa Istijlabur Risk, that all these matters will become easy and thus will draw risk and sustenance for a person. So try to read this quite often. Let us busy moist our tongues with this zikr. Then to read 25 times daily, a person should read 25 times daily. Allahumma ghfil li jami'il mu'minina wal mu'minat. If you want to make it longer, Allahumma ghfil li jami'il mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat. So, different riwayat, different ayat have emphasized seeking forgiveness. Wastaghfir li dhambik walil mu'minin. So, like how we have been encouraged in the Quran, different Anbiya Amil Alimu Salatu Salam, Nu Ali Salam, Nabi Fili, Wali Wali, Daya, Wali Mandakhala, Baita, Mumina, Wali Mumini, Wal Muminat, Ibrahim Ali Salatu Salam, Rabbi Fili, Wali Wali, Daya, Wali Muminin. And the Riwayat, one is in Tabrani, obviously, Ulama have gone into detail on the Kalam, but we won't get into that now. Istaghfir lil mu'minin wal mu'minat katab Allah lahu bi kulli mu'min wa mu'mina hasana. If a person does this daily for every believer, male or female, you will get that amount of reward. Man istaghfara lil mu'minina wal mu'minat kulla yawmin. Every day whoever does this here, one rewired 27 times, another rewired 25 times. كَانَ مِنَ الَّذِينَ يُسْتَجَابْ لَهُمْ Allah will make them amongst the mustajabu da'wat and they will 
be given risk and through them the people of the earth will be given risk. The Rewaid Majmaw Zawaid in Tabarani mentioned. So different narrations, but let us try to make it a ma'mul. So 25, 27 times every day we should be seeking forgiveness for the Ummah. Then 10 times daily. Man ista'adha billah. في اليوم عشر مرات من الشيطان سأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وكل الله به ملكا يرد عنه الشياطين Allah will deploy an angel to protect you from the shayateen من استعاذ في يوم عشر مرات وكل الله عز وجل به ملكا يرد عنه الشياطين The this angel will dispel all the shayateen So daily ten times we want to do it in the evening also, we can do it in the evening. Then the dua of Musa a.s. That, O oh my Allah, inni lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqir. So Musa a.s. used these words. Mona said, Khan Sab said, in the time of difficulty, in needs, hardships, we should use this word quite often. The ulama have explained when a person has any needs لِقَضَاءِهَا جَأْتِهِ لِأَنَّهُ تَوَسَّلْ إِلَى اللَّهِ Because this is a means of showing Allah your need and your humbleness وَالْفَقِيرُ الْمُهْتَاجِ And a person who is in need, a faqir is a needy person. So one is we are praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you are the one that will solve problems and I am the one who has problems. So, Ya Allah, you solve my problems. So, a person can read it when he feels for a certain need that a person like Musa salam and the uh, Muhaddisin explained, he said this dua, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted his dua. Bi anna Allah alham shu'ayban. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent ilham to Shaib alayhi salam and what was the result? That he stayed there in the company of a Nabi and yuzawijahu bintahu and he married the daughter of a Nabi. He married the daughter of a Nabi. Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi said, هذا وصف لحاله بإنه فقير That you are telling Allah that I am faqir means the fact that you say I am a beggar is in self a dua. And it's as if you are telling Allah you are in need and in zal al khayri ilayhi. And it is a means for all goodness to come to you. Then when we do anything, ma khaba man istikhara. So a person who makes istikhara, he will not be disappointed. So whether we read istikhara for every matter, Allahumma inni astakhiruka bi'ilmik wa astakhiruka biqudratik till the end of the dua. Or the riwayat of Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas radiyallahu an min Sa'adati ibn Adam istikharatullah wa ridahu bima qadallah That a person is fortunate that he makes istikhara and whatever istikhara Whatever situation follows, he is happy with the decision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And unfortunate of a person is a person is very unfortunate who leaves istikhara and he becomes upset with the decision of Allah. In the riwayat of Aisha radiallahu anha, Anna al-Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana idha arada amran qal When he intended any matter, he should say, Allahumma khir li wa li. Riwayat of Tirmidhi. That when he wanted to do anything, he used to read this dua, oh Allah, make it good for me and choose for me what is best. What is best? Ya Allah, put that decision and let that happen. So we should, whether a person is going to a store and buying something insignificant or whether it's something big, generally the norm is istikhara only for nikah. More than that, there's no other istikhara. Whereas we should be saying istikhara every day, morning, evening, when we buy things, otherwise not the long istikhara, then the short istikhara. 
Then another jami'a dua, if we don't know all these adiyah, then we should try to read it and make an intention for whatever we're asking for. Allahumma inni as'aluka min khayri ma sa'alaka minhu nabiyuka Muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa na'udhu bika min sharri ma sta'adha minhu nabiyuka Muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa anta al-musta'an wa alayka al-balaag wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billahi al-ali al-azim that Allah whatever good Nabi alayhi salam asks grant me that and whatever his evil he sought refuge from Ya Allah protect me from that so that should be part of our daily dua whether we read in morning and evening or whether we make in dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then another amal is to say Allahumma barik li fi al-mawt wa fi ma ba'd al-mawt and this should be done 25 times daily in the riwayat of Aisha radiallahu anhu in Tabrani and uh, in, in his kitab al-mu'jam al-awsat and uh, some kalam has been made dar qutni etc and ulama have discussed and debated on, on the chain of narrators etc but she said ya rasulallah laysa shahid illa man qutila fi sabilillah that uh, a, a shaheed is only a person who passes away in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then Nabi alayhi salam said, Ya Aisha, inna shuhada ummati idhan laqalilun. Then we won't have many shuhada in the ummah. Imagine a person lives in an era where there's no war, no chance, opportunity for shuhada. Then he said, whoever reads 25 times in the morning, Aatahu Allahu ajra shaheed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him the reward of shaheed, shahada. Some ulama have said this is the words of Sufyan Thawri rahmatullah alayhi and he should say Allahumma sallim sallim Rabbi barik li fil maut wa fi ma ba'd al maut. But we can understand also there are a hadith like for example one in Bukhari Allahumma ahini ma kanat al hayatu khayral li wa tawaffani idha kanat al wafat khayral li. So a person, if he had to make dua, then he should make this dua. So the dua for shahadat is a good dua. Likewise, other riwayat of Muslim Sharif, mamata wa lam yakhzu, person who passes away, he doesn't go in battle. Wa lam yuhadith nafsahu bihi, and he doesn't even speak about it, he doesn't have a desire for shahadat. Mata ala shu'batim min nifaq, he will die on a branch of hypocrisy. He will die on a branch of hypocrisy. So the fact that we're making dua for shahadat, Allahumma rzuqni shahadatin fi sabilik waj'al mawti bi baladi rasulik. The dua of Umar radiallahu anhu also was a dua for shahadat. Another amal is to say morning and evening three times. A'udhu billahi s-sameel alim min ash-shaytani r-rajim and the three ayat of surah hashar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will deploy وكل الله تعالى سبعين ألف ملك يصلون عليه seventy thousand angels will be deployed to seek forgiveness for you till the evening and whoever does it in the evening then likewise till the morning so the three ayat of Surah Hashar والله الذي لا إله إلا هو عالم الغيب والشهادة هو الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون هو الله الخالق البارئ المصور له الأسماء الحسنى يسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم so simple so easy we need to make عمل عند الزوايد إذن ترمزي أحمد دارمي تبراني etc and then the riwayat of Nabas radiallahu anhu that a person came to Nabi alayhi salam and he said I've got a lot of afat and calamities. So Nabi alayhi salam told him this narration is mentioned in the Amal al-Yawm al-Layla ibn al-Sunni where Nabi alayhi salam taught him the dua Bismillahi ala nafsi wa ahli wa mali then the other longer narration Azad Ma'akal bin Yasar expressed his fears over five things. One was deviating from Sirat al-Mustaqeem, was the fear of life, harm or illness befalling him, then the children, whether dini or worldly harm, then wealth. So Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam taught him this dua here, 
to read Bismillahi ala dini wa nafsi wa waladi wa ahli wa mali. So the riwayat comes a person who said this فَقَالَهُنَّ الرَّجُلْ فَذَهَبَتْ عَنْهُ الْآفَاتِ that whatever calamities that he had, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed all those calamities from that person. Likewise, whoever is Hamim, the ayat, Tal ilayhi al Masir, Hamim, Tanzil al Kitabi min Allah al Aziz al Alim, Ghafir al Zambi, Waqabil al Tawbi, Shadid al Iqabi, Zid al Tawli, La ilaha illahu ilayhi al Masir. An ayatul kursi, morning and evening. Hufiza bihima, by the barakah of reading this, he will be protected. Nowadays we're looking for protection. This is such an amal that a person will be protected. And then the amal that was done previously, whoever says, this is a rewrite of Samurab ibn Jundub. I will narrate to a narration which I heard from Nabi alayhi salam many times and from Abu Bakr. And from Umar, many times multifold. That whoever says morning and evening, Allahumma anta khalaqatani wa anta tahdini, wa anta tut'imuni wa anta tasqini, wa anta tumituni wa anta tuhyini. When we read these kalimat in the morning and evening, we should uh, try to make it a routine because this is a special Dua, a special amal, which when a person does it seven times, morning and evening. Lam yas alillahi, lam yas alillaha shay'an illa atawiya. You become mustajabu dawaj, your dua will become accepted. So he said, I met Abdullah ibn Salam and I said, Should I tell you this riwayat which I heard from these seniors? So then he said, Ha'ula il kalimat. These are the same words which Allah taught Musa salam, and he should say this seven times morning and evening and a person who sends this, his du'as will be accepted. This is a riwayat in Tirmizi, Hakim, Tabrani, etc. I've mentioned this narration. So these are the amal of Nubuat. Let us make du'a to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us tawfiq. This brings us to the end of the series only with Allah's permission. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept whatever small effort was done and forgive us whatever words were said that were inappropriate. This is a small fragment of what we could put forward and it is, it is not sufficient. It is a drop in the ocean what the ulama -i haq and the spiritual giants that are around us in our midst, they are the asal ahl, the people worthy to be called the people of knowledge, the people, the men of Allah, the men of Nubuwa, the inheritors of Anbiya alayhi salatu wassalam. We should go to these ulama and take our share from the inheritance of Nubuwa. We are just, I am just a, a, a librarian in a massive library and these are the libraries our kabir, our mashayikh, our elders, our ulama are the libraries. Let us go to them, spend time in their company and let us take benefit from them. Likewise, our contaminated tongues were not worthy to utter these noble words of Nubuwa. We, we, we are not ahl to mention one word of the light and the nur of Nubuwa. This is only through the baraka of our asatiza and seniors and mashayikh and parents and satis that have made towards you and made dua that this has become possible. Like how there is a hooter in a car, it's completely insignificant. Just at the time of zarurat and need, it was utilized. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his wisdom and hikmah knows why he has made this happen and how it was possible. Whatever was said was primarily for the speaker. The speaker is speaking for himself and we are repeating a lesson that we are in need of ourselves. This is our greatest need. Just by the way, one of the motivations of starting this series was when lockdown was implemented, we seen a dream. In the dream, Nabi was sitting in front of us, cross-legged and his head was tilted down to the ground. Hazrat Abu Huraira was on my right, the muhaddith of this ummah. And he looked very grieved and stressed and perplexed. And he was running through different scenarios and different complexities and trying to brainstorm for possible solutions. As Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu was speaking, Nabi alayhi salatu was salam said calmly, never said anything and listened attentively. When he was done, Nabi alayhi salatu was salam addressed Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu and said, O kama qal, O Abu Huraira, Ya Abu Huraira, there is no need to search for any solution which are you, you looking for. All the solution, every solution to every problem is what I have brought. And the conversation ended like that. Ulama have interpreted the dream to say that that was when lockdown was implemented and the entire global structure had collapsed. Never in history was there ever an incident noted of such magnitude. Hazrat Abu Huraira was distinct in the field of hadith and to highlight the answer of Nabi wasalam, he was the one who was looking for solutions. And the solution that Nabi gave was eluding to the narration, O kama qal, taraktu fikum amrain. I have left for you two solutions. Kitab Allah wa sunnata nabihi. The book of Allah and the sunnat of Janabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Other riwayat ma ini' tasamtum bihi If you hold steadfast Other riwayat in akhadtum bihi If you grab onto it You will never go astray Whatever problem you have You will find our solution In summary we have to mold our lives in every dimension to what Allah and His Rasul has taught us. Our life should circumambulate, rotate and our focus should be only in Quran and in the life of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We ask Allah to accept our efforts, grant us tawfiq, to make amal and resurrect us on the day of Qiyamah under His Arsh with Anbiya and Sahaba and enter us into Jannah without reckoning wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.